and also through YouTube with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, I'd like to invite the church to stand up. We're going to read the book of Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 2. Joshua 2, 17, 18. 17, 18. Joshua. Chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Listen the word of our God. E disseram-lhe aqueles homens: Desobrigados seremos deste teu juramento que nos fizeste jurar. Eis que, vindo nós à terra, atarás este cordão de fio de escarlata à janela, por onde nos fizeste descer, e recolherás em casa contigo a teu pai e a tua mãe e a teus irmãos e a toda a família de teu pai. Te adoramos, somos gratos a ti por esse instante de comunhão que na tua palavra. Father's husband, to your own house. Lord, we ask that you bless your church with this message and we pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. The word of God says that God gave an order for a city called Jericho to be to be destroyed. But before the order was executed, the Bible tells us that Joshua, whose translation to this name is God is salvation. He now sends to the city two men two spies so that they could observe the city and the war tells us that when they came to the city a woman called Rahab she received them into her house she hosted her, uh, them into her house but not only that but she also delivered them from death to those two men. And why did she do that? Because she knew of what God, of the God of those men had already done in Egypt, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the amazing feats. She already knew everything. She knew that what God had done to the kings that rose in the desert against that people, against that nation. So she knew that these people was the people of God. People chosen by God. And uh, upon these people that was a promise on the part of God that they would inherit the earth God had promised a land a good land a wide land that flows honey and milk and this land was going to be given to these people and we know that the God whom we serve is the God creator and Lord of heaven and earth and in the same way that he made a promise in the past to the people of Israel that he was going to give to the people of Israel a good, wide, spacious land, a land that flows honey and milk, the Lord Jesus also made to us the same promise. It is written in the Word. This is the promise that he has made to us to give us eternal life. And the same way as in the past Joshua had already been in that land beside 11 people and among them 
there was a man called Caleb. He had walked through that land and he came back to the place where he was waiting for the moment to conquer that land because that was the order of the Lord. He walked on that land and then came back. Now it was the right time for them to enter into that land in order to conquer that land. So Jesus came from eternity. He walked through this land, that land of promise where honey and milk runs through. He was taken away through his death and resurrection. And now he's returning to take possession of what is his. To fulfill the promise that he made to us a new heaven and a new earth and in those days then he sent two spies in those days in which we're living are the days in which the spies of Joshua the spies of Jesus they are walking in Jericho they are walking upon the face of the earth and which one are those spies they are the Holy Spirit of God that has walked throughout the earth. And in the same as those in those days, those men, they found a place to, to be. They found a house in order to inhabit the day in which we are living. The days in which the Holy Spirit is finding a shelter in order to inhabit and in order to dwell and we are going to uh, dwell in them and we are making a house in them and when we look to the illustration of Rahab we think well maybe it could have been an, a better person right for this man to enter into that land right wouldn't it be wouldn't it have been like a better person in order for the Holy Spirit to enter because if we look at the situation of Rahab, she was, she was a sinner. But the Bible says that everyone has sinned and they, went, they no longer have the right to the glory of God. And the reward of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So God does not choose a person of another. Somebody could have made a judgment and condemned that woman. But the Bible says that Jesus did not come to condemn. He came to save the world, to save humanity. It was a demonstration of the love of God. It was an opportunity that the men of Jericho, the women of Jericho, they were having at that moment because there was going to be was a lesser opportunity for that woman and where did she live? she lived on top of a wall it was a woman that had a life that was not defined and had not a definition she didn't know what she wanted that's why she was on top of the wall she had a life that was not had not a the definition she heard of the sign of wonders and miracles I'm repeating this she knew what God had done on behalf of that people. But at that moment, she had, until that moment, she had not made a decision. She continued to inhabit and living and dwelling on top of the wall of that city. And it is interesting that the wall was the target of the destruction. The first thing that was going to fall down in Jericho was the wall. And since she lived on top of the wall, her house was going to be destroyed. But then the word of God says that that woman, when she received those men into her house, after having knowledge of everything that God had done on their behalf and who they represented, what was to come, what was to happen, because she knew of the size of the thing that God had done and the judgment that was about to happen in those days. So she comes to those men and she says the following. The Lord, 
the Lord your God. It was not her God. The Lord your God is the God above heaven and under the earth. So, your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. He's the one that has power, all the power in heaven and on earth. And once the disciple of Jesus experienced this, who's this? Even the wind and the seas, he orders and they obey him. Who is this? This is the Lord of lords. This is our God. He's the God of the church. He's the God of a people that is going to be taken away and taken to the eternity. So in those days, she taken, took an action. She let go of her life in definition and uncertainties because she realized that it was the moment of the opportunity. It was a moment for her to be saved. It was a moment for her not to perish with the people of that city. But she didn't want to leave that place alone. She didn't want to be saved on her own. It is interesting that Bible says, do you believe in Jesus? You'll be saved, you and your household. And this month we are praying for you and for your household. This is the month of the family. And in that month, the Bible says that Jesus saved, the Lord saved, not just the Lord saved, the entire family. Because she made a covenant. She made an alliance. She made a covenant with those men. So if you, my brother and sister, you are here with us, you've made a pact with the Lord, truly, you and your entire household will be saved. The word says like this, my brother, that that woman in this meeting, she said, I want to teach what is right. I want a, a sure sign, actually, she said. She wanted a sign, but it had to be a sure sign, a sign that could point out to me a direction, a sign that, that showed that that would not be, so that it could be identified in the moment in which Joshua comes to conquer this land. And we need a sign, a sure sign. So that we are not confused. We need a sure sign. So that when Jesus comes. We may be saved. With him. Not only us. But, your, but our entire household. And what was the sign. That the spies gave to this woman. And to this family. And the Bible says that it was. A string of scarlet. The Bible says, so that when we come to the land, so when Jesus comes, it's necessary for you to, for you to bind this line of scarlet cord in the window. So if the scarlet uh, line is present, there will be salvation. The line of scarlet is not present, we will have, we will have no obligation to save it. So, that's what they said if we were to, when we return here when Joshua enters to the city if there is a line of scarlet this family will be saved if there is no line of scarlet the family will not be saved so it was not a covenant of a single day of an hour of a week it was a covenant that had to take place until the moment in which Joshua came to conquer the land. So the covenant the Lord wants to do with me, to you, my brother and sister, went in the house of the Lord, and this covenant, this alliance, may remain in your life until the moment in which Jesus comes to take his church. And it says that then you see the 
line of scarlet and what is the meaning of this line of scarlet uh, line of scarlet it is the blood of Jesus the Holy Spirit that gives us full fellowship with God because in the blood of Jesus we will be saved it is the blood of Jesus that purifies that sanctifies it is the blood of Jesus that forgive our sins the blood of Jesus unites us it places once again in the presence of God is the blood the blood of Jesus Christ and we'll see that in the book of Revelations who are those where they came from those ones who washed their garments and whited them out in the blood of the Lamb that's why day and night in the presence of God why because they remain in the covenant the alliance the agreement so if I remain in the covenant of the Lord in alliance the agreement with the Lord if the line is scarlet the presence of the Holy Spirit remains in my life you will be saved my whole family will be saved and it's continuous saying if it doesn't happen we are not going to be we have no obligation of this covenant the commitment of the Lord is with the one who has the Holy Spirit the commitment of the Lord is with the one who was washed his garment with the blood of Jesus Jesus died to give us this opportunity of being saved to inherit this land, this heaven that has prepared and promised for our lives if we don't have the blood, the mark of the blood and the Holy Spirit we no longer have any obligation so in other words, the covenant will be annulled, broken so that woman, she understood that she needed to remain with the line of scarlet at her window she needed to remain with the mark of the blood she needed to be identified and while identified the servant of God is not the garment that they were wearing the size of their hair what identified the servant of God is the mark of the blood is the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian the ones who made a covenant, an alliance, an agreement with the Lord. And the word says, my brethren, that she did according to what this spy told her. And the theme of this year is, who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit says to the church. So this woman heard, she obeyed, she collected her family, she gathered her family into her house, and she kept the line of scarlet on her window and her whole family was saved and the desire of the Lord for us at this moment is this to, so as to gather our family inside of our house to be in fellowship with the Lord fellowship with the Holy Spirit because at any moment Jesus will come he, he will not delay Amen let's hear a song of praise
Amen. Rahab, she left her house on top of the wall, and now she defies her house on the Lord. And that's the desire of the Lord for your life. Get off the wall of indefinition and build your house in the Lord. The Lord was showing a woman that had a great disappointment appointment about six months ago in her mind and it would be impossible to overcome it. And she has sought resources, professional resource, and those have been in vain. The Lord is revealing himself to this woman and is telling that he is the doctor of the doctors. He is the one that can heal you. Remove you this disappointment, anguish, sadness, pain, and suffering. The Lord Jesus is a specialist in every area of our lives. And this search is not in vain because Jesus is God. And in God, everything is possible. And the Lord wants this woman to leave this place making this covenant, this alliance, this agreement with, with him, and she will have health, and she will live in peace. The Lord also has shown a man that is going through difficulties on his walk. He is, has discourage, is discouraged, and he came today here seeking to, for spiritual food, to strengthen, for a word of a, a sure sign. And a sure sign, my brother, for you, for my life, for our lives is the string of scarlet. It is the constant presence of the Holy Spirit in your life that is going to take our, a, our, every discouragement and tiredness and strengthen you, to give you encouragement and hope. It is going to lead you to this new heaven and this new earth. Amen. The church will stand up. I want to praise you and thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for everything that I've done in our midst, in our lives, to our benefit, the salvation through Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit at this moment has reached many lives, has transformed and has guided us into your presence and has placed us, Lord, placed these families in the list of the ones who are going to be in your eternity. That's be your name for it. All, the, all those things. Receive your self's adoration because we offer it to you in the name of Jesus. In the name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord is Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be upon the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to inform the church that this week, this beginning, is a service at noon. We don't have service here in the church, but the brethren, whatever you are, around noon to the Lord and place the Lord the topic of the month the salvation of our family members if you are here with us if you need a special attention a prayer clarification of what you heard and saw here tonight we are here at your disposal and we say that this coming Thursday at 8, 8 we have a service of presence a service here a prayer at 8 Saturday morning we have an early dawn service a uh, six o'clock service for the women this coming Saturday, and 7:30 p.m. another service of glorification to the Lord. And every Sunday morning at 10:30 in the morning we have Sunday school, and at 7:30 p.m. another service of glorification. Everyone is invited to participate. So we should be one the peace of the Lord.